Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Quite often we get comments that our beef is the best that folks have ever tasted, and for a beef farmer, that's the highest compliment you can get. Lately, I've been thinking about what sets it apart, what makes it better, because we're in competition with a lot of other farms at market that sell both grass-finished and grain-finished beef. So I got to thinking about it, and I think it's the details of how we raise it that make all the difference. Just like with Wagyu beef, a very strict regimen as far as the quality of the, the feed that the cow gets, its living conditions. So in this video, I want to take you through the little details that I think provide superior beef production. These guys are really going to town on this alfalfa hay this morning. Hey, please subscribe to our channel. We're getting close to a thousand subscribers and we'd really like to hit that mark so we can make a little money from YouTube. Thank you. I think that with beef more than any other animal, what you taste when you eat the meat is the environment that the animal was raised in. So if you're eating beef that was raised in plenty of fresh air, on pasture with plenty of lush, green, tender grass, it's going to taste that way. Beef is so specific to its climatic conditions. So the beef that we grow here, rightly so, is a unique flavor beef based on the type of pasture we're growing, the weather, and all that varies depending on where you are. And that's the way it should be. Beef grown here will taste different from a farm from down south or out west where the climate's different, the species of grass they're eating is different. Locally flavored beef is one of the great things about a local food system. Let's go through those little details that make all the difference. The first is when you're starting out, buy pure blood registered Dexter stock. The best way to do that is to buy from a breeder with a good reputation where you can go and see the animals, the environment they were raised in. I can't stress enough how important it is to buy registered stock. Don't buy from the auction barn. You never know what you're getting from the auction barn. Do your legwork and find good stock. This investment is much more important than any fences or barns you would build. Starting out with good genetics is the basis for your whole operation. Providing a low stress environment for your animals is hugely important to the quality of the beef you're going to get. And there's one aspect of this where our farm runs completely against the grain compared to mainstream farming practices. And that's how we wean our calves. We don't artificially wean our calves. Most farms will pull the calves off of their moms at four months and wean them abruptly. And this always results in a lot of stress for the calf and for the mom as well as a weight backslide for the calf as it adjusts to its new growing conditions. We let our mama cows wean their calves naturally. If you leave a calf on a cow, she'll gradually wean it off starting at about the six or seven month mark. And our calves now at about the 11 month mark are almost completely weaned from their moms as their moms get ready for their next calf. At the other end of the cattle growth cycle, we also don't segregate our steers when we're grass finishing them. Many farms will put their steers in a separate finishing lot, but cattle are herd animals, and whenever you break up the herd, it results in stress throughout the herd. So we keep the steers with the main herd as we're finishing them. And finally, we let the cattle eat at the grass buffet whenever they want. In the summertime, they're out in the fields day or night. In the wintertime, they always have hay in their bunks. Restricting a cow's feed is very stressful on the animal. Cows are made to be in increments that don't necessarily match when it's daylight and dark. They eat in six hour increments, they digest in six hour increments. The next topic is you have to pay close attention to your cattle's diet. Cattle that are grown on crap pasture will taste like crap. And when we started our farm, we started by seeding our fields with a nutrient rich mix. Some people will turn an overgrown field into a pasture by grazing cattle on it. I don't believe in that method. I believe in plowing it up, planting, and starting with a good grass legume mix. We started by planting a mixture of grasses and legumes in our pastures, and our pastures are also our hay fields, so this mix serves both purposes. We planted red and white clover and alfalfa as our legume component, and that's about 40% of the seed mix. 
Alfalfa is especially good because it cycles nutrients up from deep, deep down in the soil. Alfalfa's got really deep roots, so it brings those nutrients up into the soil cycle where the cows are grazing. The other components of our feeding mix are Timothy, orchard grass, and perennial rye grass. If you keep your cattle grazing in the proper fashion and you take hay when the grass gets ahead of you, you won't wind up with weeds because the grass crowds them out. And you will maintain a good legume mix through the life of the pasture because the grasses don't get tall enough to shade out the clovers and the alfalfa. Once you have your cattle on good grass pasture, the next thing is to learn how to grass finish in the best way. And grass finishing is a lot more nuanced than grain finishing. With grain finishing, you just segregate the steers and put the grain to them. With grass finishing, you're looking more at the season you're finishing them in, what they're eating as far as how mature the forage is, and the whole timeline changes. So I'm going to spend some time and go over that. Grass finishing results in a more complex beef flavor than grain finishing does, but it takes time. You can grain finish a steer in as little as 15 months, but it takes 26 to 28 months for us to grass finish one of our steers. If you're looking at two steaks side by side, you can immediately tell which is grain finished and which is grass finished. A 15 month old grade finished steak will have a light pink color, almost like veal, whereas a 26 to 28 month old grass finished steak will have a deep red color. It's important to finish steers on the best grass possible. So we start finishing ours in April and May when you get the spring flush of nutrient rich grass. And they'll continue to finish from that May mark through June or July and then they start going to the butcher. But you have to have the most nutrient rich grass of the whole year to finish animals on. And unfortunately, Grass finish is a process you just can't rush. It's a seasonal thing, so we're not sending steers to the butcher in the middle of the winter early to meet a gap in our production schedule. If you send a grass finish steer too early to the butcher, you'll wind up with tough meat. It won't marble up properly, and that marbling is a secret to tender meat. Any steer that's sent to the butcher early, you'll wind up making hamburger out of because there's no good steaks in that early steer. This reminds me of a general rule that I learned early on when we started farming, and that is there's a balance. So the older the animal that you slaughter, the more flavor it will have, but also it'll be tougher. With grass finishing beef, you're always looking for that happy balance between tenderness of meat and flavor. Too old and they're too tough. Too young and they're also too tough with grass finished beef. But if you hit it at the right mark you get tenderness and you get lots and lots of flavor. Grass finishing really is an art and you have to be able to look at the animal and understand where it is in the finishing process from its frame and from its muscle tone. Steers, before they start finishing, will increase their frame size as they're growing out to adulthood. In the finishing phase, you see them fill out that frame. So if you look at the rear hind quarters, the front quarters, you'll see that that muscle tone really begins to expand out as the steer finishes. If you watch your steers over the course of the summer growing season using that eye, you'll know when they're ready to go. The next important detail is to actually manage how your cattle grazes. We do an improvisational management of our cattle grazing every summer. So starting the season, we never know what their movement's going to be. We move them based on the development and the growth of the grass in every field. And our goal is to keep them on grass that's no less than eight inches tall and no more than the stage when the seed stalk is starting to emerge from the boot. If you keep them on grass like that, you're getting your cattle premium nutrition. If the grass gets ahead of us, then we make hay out of it. But we don't want cattle on over mature forage because there's less nutrition in forage that's gone to seed. To accomplish this continual grazing on premium stage forage, we're moving the cattle every day. The next devil in the details is providing proper mineral and protein supplements 
and feeding your cattle good quality hay in the winter time. After all, here winter feeding is about six months out of the year. There's an old joke among farmers that it's a lot less work to wait till August to make hay and then you can take first and second cutting at the same time. <laughs> Obviously we don't do that. We start cutting just as soon as the weather's cooperative for making hay, and we continue with cutting second and third right through the beginning of September. When it comes to mineral and protein supplements, I've got a separate video on that, which I'll put up here, that's filled with information about how to properly supplement your cattle's nutrition. There's no data that I can find on whether mineral supplements improve the flavor of beef, but I gotta think that there's a relationship if the cattle are healthy and getting the right vitamins and minerals, it's going to make their meat taste better. The last detail is to find a butcher that knows what they're doing. And the biggest part of that is letting the beef hang. Beef carcasses need to hang for at least seven days so that enzymes can go to work and tenderize the beef before it's cut. A lot of the beef that you find in the grocery store doesn't go through this curing process because they need to move it through the system and hanging the beef takes away from its shelf life. So they'll what's called package age it, where they cut it and package it and send it out to the supermarkets. That's not really proper curing. As I thought about what makes our beef so delicious, I realized it's just these details that I've gone over. You have to actively manage your herd to keep their stress level down, to keep them with proper nutrition and mineral and protein supplementation. Those are the keys to good beef. The devil's in the details. If you're successful, you'll wind up with beef that is both delicious and unique to your farm. That's how beef should be. Beef flavor should be affected by the place in which it's grown and the forage that the cattle are eating. This is very different from modern feedlot beef that's finished in a homogenous fashion and tastes the same wherever it's finished out. I hope this video is informative. Stay healthy and I'll see you next time.